Hello and welcome to episode 11 of The Deck Turtle. So we've moved on to Exodus now from the Tempest block and we're currently going to be opening six packs of Exodus. Once we've done this video then in the next series of episodes um, we'll be going back through, so we'll do Tempest and Stronghold, Tempest and Exodus, Stronghold and Exodus, and then two packs each of Tempest, Stronghold and Exodus, and finally, just because it makes more sense thematically rather than chronologically, we will do some packs of Tempest Remastered, <clears throat> so something to look forward to in the next five or six episodes. I think that's covered all the combinations left. And then obviously after that we move on to the next, whatever the next block is. So yeah, plenty of potential content there. So you can see here I've got my six packs already created within mtgen.net so let's have a quick look see what we pulled I've ordered these by rarity and you can see now as we've moved into the Tempest block the rarities are a lot clearer on the cards uh, rarity colors weren't something they had in the early days of magic and um, obviously they've started to kick in as we've got later into magic's history so we have Mind Over Matter as our rares, two and four blue. Choose and discard a card, tap or untap target artifact, creature or land. And then we've got uh, three uncommons here. And in these packs, um, because there were no basic lands included in boosters, you're going to see 11 commons Moving on to the next pack. So Ogre Shaman, three and two red. Summon Ogre, three, three. Two, discard a card at random. Ogre Shaman deals two damage to target creature or player. And here's our three uncommons. You can see we're seeing enchantments at uncommons here. It's a pretty creature heavy pack, looking at that. Pandemonium is the rare in our next pack, so three and a red enchantment. Whenever any creature comes into play, that creature's controller may choose to have it deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Okay, so we've got all creatures in our uncommon slot here. Clearly you can see shadows a thing. That's wood elves. Okay, next booster. Let's just get this in the right order. Ogre Shaman. Is that our second one? It is indeed. Double Ogre Shaman. We got in our uncommon slots Forbid Crashing Boars and Song of Serenity. Again, another enchantment and uncommon. Oh, yeah, Carnophage. You'll notice um, the block as a whole. It'd be interesting when we get on to two packs each of the of each set of the block <clears throat> whether there's a, a viable mono black deck, a real fast one. Because um, there were quite a few of these creatures so you know pretty good power toughness to casting cost but some sort of uh, caveat here. So during your upkeep, pay one life or tap Carnophage. I 
Oath of Ghouls is our next rare, so one and a black enchantment during each player's upkeep. If there are more creature cards in that player's graveyard than in target opponent's graveyard, that player may return a creature card from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. So we are seeing some graveyard shenanigans going on in this block. Another enchantment here in the uncommon slot. Another carnophage. We've got a smaller set as well, remember, so um, when you do six packs of a smaller set, uh, the probabilities on commons gets interesting um, and you start to pull a lot more multiples than you would normally because when you've got a card pool of what, something in the region of 160 cards, we'll, we'll see in a moment what, that, what the actual set size is. Um, things get interesting at common. So our last pack we pulled, Memory Crystal, three to cast, all buyback costs are reduced by two. So buyback's a thing uh, in this block. Peace of mind, mind maggots, another crashing balls. So obviously I took these um, exported them. Just go through that again. So I export them from here using Frogtown, and I cover this in extensively in the early videos, uh, which is is a format that's closest to what um, Architect recognizes. And then all I simply do is convert the square brackets into curve brackets uh, because that's what Architect recognizes uh, as, as indicating where the set name is. And to do that, I just simply use my our old friend in Windows Notepad. Um, and we come into Exodus, do an import, and here's the deck ready to go. I've also introduced again an endeavor to speed up the selection of, um, of the land. I've sideboarded the land this time, one of each of the colors. So hopefully this will speed up some of the later parts of this deck building. So that's the, the set artwork that I've chosen. Maybe I'll uh, make this a little bit larger. I normally find around 125 is quite good. Um, you know, if you're trying to get this laid out, I'm on my screen here, I'm using a 36 inch screen. At home, obviously, you're not going to be aware of that <laughs> looking at this through YouTube, but uh, I find on that screen with Architect um, at the normal sort of Windows scaling, 125% uh, is perfect for deck building. At this point, obviously, I adjust it as I play around. Okay, so what do we want to do? got sky shaper sacrifice sky shaper all creatures you control gain flying until end of turn interesting just trying to think of the blue card is it levitation that does a similar thing memory crystal we'll leave that for the moment see what our buyback situation is like okay plenty of creatures in multiple colors Again, um, not as many as when we were looking at Mirage Block, but uh, quite a number of enchantments. So let's just go through some of these enchantments. Oath of Ghouls, so this is one of our rares. During each player's upkeep, if there are more creature cards in that player's graveyard than in target opponent's graveyard. Okay, we'll keep hold of that for the moment. Let's card draw, treasure trove, robe of mirrors. And again, we need to keep an eye, because it's a small set, we need to keep an eye on um, the count here, closer than normal, because this can get up quite high. We can end up with like four ofs common. And actually, before I do that, I almost forgot. Let's just quick look at uh, here, MTG Wiki. 
So what's this saying? Keepers, lizards, oath, spikes, buyback and shadow were a thing. What cycles? Yeah, we don't have a ton of cycles. And there was some theme decks, obviously. Some mono blue, black red, white red, and blue black. And they would have obviously featured also probably cards from the two earlier sets of the block. So there are only 143 cards here. So yeah, there's a good chance we're gonna get multiples of several commons here. Johnny creature cannot be the target spells or abilities. Okay, so we've got a shroud effect in blue, mind over matter. Just got a card, tap one, tap top. Okay, interesting. Our oh, blue's looking interesting. Mana breach, whenever any player plays a spell, that player turns a land, he or she is to his hand. Curiosity, if a jaded creature damages an opponent, you may draw a card. Song of Serenity, creatures any enchantments on them cannot attack or block. Hmm. Oops. Bequeath, or if enchanted creatures put into any graveyard, draw two cards. Hmm. Okay. Pandemonium, which comes into play, the creature's controller may choose to have its powers. Okay, yeah, I like the sound of that. Manacle Rage, which is plus two, plus two, and cannot block for two. What should we call that? A bear coat? <laughs> that adds. Two, two for two. Bear armor. Um, enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. Okay, yep. There's uh, quite a few cards in Magic's history that have this sort of shackles effect on them. Nice one with this is you can uh, return it to its owner's hand so you can recast it on a different creature, so that's really flexible. Choose a card from your hand and put that card on the top of your library. Print all damage. Yeah. No. Don't really want to go down the life gain thing. Scare tactics. All creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. That's the instant speed. We've got three culling the weeks here. Okay. Sacrifice a creature add. Five black to your mana pool. Right, so we've got a sack outlet. It generates mana. Forbid. Well, that's one buyback on it. Choose and discard two cards. Counter target spell. So that doesn't really work with um, memory crystal. Claim, put the top, put the tar card card from your graveyard on the top of your library. So you m might want to be on the lookout for a green black graveyard deck. Shattering Pulse. Yeah, I tend to sideboard artifact destruction as I'm going through. Um, core chart. Yeah, not a big fan of redirect or fog effects in sealed, but I mean they're handy if you've got the right deck. I mean I think they're quite handy if you're you've got your deck around particularly fog effects. Um anything that sort of locks down your opponent for a turn in some way or prevents damage in some way 
um, the nice effects I think that I like are ones that sort of bounce them for a turn and then you can um, alpha strike them <laughs> so choosing discard a creature card vampires get plus two plus two until end of turn mind maggots when mind maggots comes into play choose and discard any number of creature cards for each okay so we looks like we've got self discard here Scroll hub for each one damage um, each opponent gains one life why is that? okay three three for three one of the black star one shadow can block all does he warlord has power equal to the number of creatures with shadow in play mm, dependent on how much shadow stuff we have another shadow creature does he jackal is it to destroy target block creature okay. choose and discard the card placement it's a sorcery hmm oh there's arcana face Yeah, we should see what red's like as well. Hmm. I'm just looking through here. I can see if anything really creature-wise draws me to black. I haven't looked at the sorcery yet. Okay, it's flying. Two and two blue, three two with flying. Put wayward soul on top of owner's library. Alakos Scout. It's quite difficult to read these actually, this style of um, like border. In some ways I like the combination around this period in Magic of the Border and the artwork, but it does make sometimes this quite unreadable in cert from certain angles. It's another shadow creature. Two and a blue, a two one for two and a blue lots of dis discard for us of some sort of reward school of piranha that's a three three for two auto mystic oh merfolk looters okay Mm. Mm. Yeah, blue black is cooler. <laughs> oh, hang on, wood elves. Okay. Do we want to do some sort of green and red? Is that going to be a thing? Mm. Three and a green, three two. Sacrifice the forest, regenerate. Rabid wolverines, three. And two green it blocks blue green, maybe I don't know. Pick me troll. Looks like we're pretty stupid creatures in green as troll. Hmm, don't know about that one. Oh, we've got Elvish Berserker in here. Okay. There's our crashing balls. I'm liking green. Reckless Ogre, Raging Goblin, Ogre Shaman. Okay, Major Vec. Player. Mm, there's lots of card discard, isn't there? In this Keeper of the Flame. Yeah, we're looking good in red green here. 
three and a red for three three. Red target creature cannot be regenerated this turn. Cinder crawler. One two for one and a red. Red Cinder crawler gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Okay, so far in a lot of the pools we've seen, I don't think our white creatures have been that brilliant. Three and a white. Non-land permanence you control or white gain one life. Mm. Nah. Charging Paladin, Shield Mate, Shadow, mm. Standing Troops. Well, you know what I'm going to do? rid of this I, I don't know if there's even a shadow creature build in here which looking at the cards we've got would be what white blue black I don't think nausea all creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn fugue target player chooses and discards three cards Theft of Dreams, for each tapped creature, ta creature target opponent controls, draw a card, fade away. We've definitely got to try something in blue for each creature. One or sacrifice permanent, ether type. This creature. And we've got Angelic Blessing. Okay. Well, we'll just sideboard all our white stuff. Um. Might take a, a look at blue splashing some other colour. Gonna look at red green first, I think. That's my instinct here. I think for those two colours we've got the most options. We I don't know how good our Removal is a bit shaky, though. But we'll see. Don't know if we've got much buyback either. Let me just keep an eye on this. Oh, wrong one. Shattering Pulse. I took out by mistake there. We don't want to do that. Oh no, that was a reason why we did that. That only deals with artifacts. Okay. So these can all come out for the moment until we go down that route. I'm not. See, apart from just thinking as I'm going along here about what I could build next. I'm going to look at something in black, but it will maybe black as a secondary colour. Oh, look, we've got a ton of creatures to play around with here. Okay. Right, what do we got? So, got a ton of wood elves. I'm just going through and just seeing how much buyback we've got here, and whether it's even worth playing the memory crystal.
Hmm. Okay, <laughs> we're nearly there. Wow, this is really super creature heavy. <laughs> Do we have, we didn't, we've got nothing. This is, yeah, this is, okay, this is going to be an interesting build. So I just need to lose some stuff. Um, I've got to get this down to 23 cards. It's not that tricky, I don't think. Um, some of these I might decide to lose. multiple copies let me just take that out I don't know how many wood elves we want okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this by where are we? Okay. Sort the views here. apologize for the noise. I think someone's scraping their drive outside. I don't know if you can catch it in the background. Uh, we had a big snowstorm yesterday here. So <laughs> it's one of those things. Okay. Mm. Custom. Right. So, do we even want to play that? Yeah, why not? Got to play something apart from just creatures. Right, let's just have a look here. So I've got some five drops, maybe need to just thin this out a little bit. Invested. I can only do that once. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, fourteen to thirteen. So fairly even split. Right, let us bring across this, just switch the view. And then main board this. So need to come in here and that was our main and then as 
Windmill Forest. Yeah, it looks like with this deck we're going all in with creature combat. Okay, here we go. So, just trying to remember, there was slightly more, ever so slightly more red than green. Okay. <laughs> Right, let's see what this looks like when we play test. Okay, so a single mountain. And we could play a raging goblin. Uh oh. That's not good. Got another. This is really strange. It's not done it that thing again, has it? Where it? That's funny. Did I forget to save it? I'm sure, what's going on here? Maybe I forgot to save it. That's better. Okay, so Raging Goblin, turn one, turn two, Sky Shaper, for the mountain. Reckless Ogre, for the mountain. So we can now play out. Our four drops. And now our five drops come online. So we've got two two turn twos here, um, but at the moment, unless we pull another mount here. Um, We'd only be able to play this on turn two. Sky Shaper. I've got. Yep. So we're good. So yes, yeah, so it's looking interesting from like a creature heavy deck. Um, zero utility. Um, apart from what's afforded to us through the creatures we've got here. But. We don't really have much supporting stuff apart from the sky shaper. Okay, but I'll be an interesting deck to play. You know, if you like, like creature combat, as most people do, um, that's you know fun deck. Okay. So that's our first deck. What do we want to do now? Well, let's just sideboard everything except our sky shaper and bring back blue. And just see what blue just looks like. In and of itself, here's 
本当だよね。サイダースクリシャイバー。Look through all black while I'm in here. I do like it when it does that reorganizes everything. It's on mana breach. So there's quite a lot of enchantments in blue, but we don't have a ton of creatures. What do you reckon? Just working out if <coughs> there were no other shadows in play, that would just be a 1-1 one, one for 2. And I think the only other shadow creature was in white, I believe. We have two of those. Okay, so... Just slim this down a bit.
you fall. Finishes here. Have I got any large? Well. Flying conophages could be pretty nasty. Okay, let's just see what this looks like. This kind of fades out pretty quick though. So we've got a number of double blues. Well, let's just see what this looks like from a play perspective. That's all we can say really just go from there. Oh there's our swamp. There's our carnophage. Cool. Turn one carnophage. There's our island. Turn two Merfolk looter. Stick that onto our <laughs> carnophage. Okay. Interesting. We're having a bit of trouble with uh, our land here. Again, I'm just going to check something. Oh, what is going on? This is so bizarre.
that's what I'm worried about is if I can't get the carnophages out quick enough that's good that's a good hand yeah so I definitely so the other deck I just want to take a look at is the um I dump the blue and see what red looks like with black I mean I like that deck that blue black deck probably to me looks fun with the three carnophages I just want to see what uh, we went for a real creature heavy red black deck what that would look like in this particular um, situation we're doing things pretty fast just put all the red back in I'm trying to decide as well whether there was even a black green um, graveyard matters deck in here or not but I don't know if I want to go down that avenue okay so we need three more cards Assuming actually not every one of these is going to be any good. Okay. right let us see what we've got here so we have a cat burglar Clutching at straws a bit here. I think I 
I'm struggling a bit here to find playables. I mean, well, I say that he could. I mean, we could go for. I thought it wouldn't hurt to go down the hand dis hand disruption route. Let's do that. Swamp my islands. No, what am I talking about? Mountains. Stats, so I can adjust this. Okay. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> Which all that has? Yeah, all red. Okay. Okay, so there's our old friend Carnophage. Jules have got no black till turn three. Well, turn two maybe, depending on whether on the player on the door. Good thing is with those three Carnophages, we're definitely seeing that fairly early on so far. This is another interesting deck. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely being drawn towards playing either blue-black or red-blue here. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to look at that black green deck maybe that I thought might be here.
thing about the um, black green deck is there may be a bit more flexibility in here because we've got some fairly fast creatures combined with some quite um, like higher casting cost stuff. Go down here. What we got twenty eight. Okay, get rid of that. Okay. Use two cards. Let's put this on a curve. So we've been some interesting builds so far. Oops. Wrong choice. Okay. Maybe I don't want that in there. So much. one of those anyway okay see what this one looks like okay forests oops um swamps in here and I would quite like to have please oops some land if I may there we go Again, being mindful, I do really want to get those um, carnophages out. So I do need to make sure I've definitely got swamps in my opening hand. Oops. Okay, two forests in the swamp. Turn two shapeshifter, nothing else till turn four at the moment. Elvish Berserker. Dirty Jackal. Swamp. Both are kind of phage. Fairly late. Yeah, see this time around they're appealing fairly late, which is interesting. We must have just got lucky on all the other pulls. So the other the other draws. That's pretty good actually. I 
looks fun. Let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very. This deck has potential. <laughs> okay. So the way I see, <coughs> for me, green black looks interesting. Um, the the curve might be slightly better because we've got some nice sort of higher end creatures. Maybe let me just check that again because it, it's always difficult with these. So there's more chance we got finishes. My main concern is we need to get those um, carnophages out real fast. And uh, it's great if you've got quite a few in your opening hand. Like we've seen a couple of instances where I think I had two. Um, but obviously once they start getting blocked... Um, you know, they don't become so useful, I suppose. You've got to start paying life to untap them. Oh, sorry. Yeah, if you don't pay one life, sorry, they tap. So that this might be my sort of my go-to. Support's a bit sketchy generally in this particular pool. Um, the blue, the blue black look real interesting. Actually, There's, there was like a ton of utility in there. Lots of interesting card draw stuff going on. Not so many creatures that we could pull on. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, keeping that in mind with with the fact that we've got, you know, black green would be probably the one I might play and the blue black. The, the black red, um, again, we, we know really the, the main part of the deck, I suppose, is coming from these kind of free carnophages. So I don't know here whether, because the blue utility is so strong, whether you would be looking for some sort of three color. I've I've shied away from a three color builds. I always find them a bit problematic in sealed unless you've got supporting mana fixing now we do have some stuff in green but i think that's only for the benefit of yeah green um so whether or not some sort of i don't know green black blue i mean i'd want to go blue black and the problem is i can't really be splashing green because the the cards I'd want to play, which are the slightly higher casting cost cards with slightly larger power and toughness, um, they're like two greens, two greens. So this is it's tricky. So I mean, one thing, one possibility, and again, if our blue utility is is all single blue casting costs in in you know in the sorry in the casting cost then one possibility might be a, a black, green, blue, splashing blue build. Um, certainly looking at the cards we've got here, you know, black is splashable. We don't have many, I don't think any double black or more cards that I want to play, would want to play. Um, the green, you know, the more useful cards or the sort of cards you might want in, in a deck to to increase its in, increase its power um a lot of those cards you know require two green um in blue i mean you've got a counter spell with two blue so i don't know if you would want to be splashing that but again if maybe you were playing that later in the game to deal with some big threat you know creature threat then you, you, your blue may have come online by then. It just depends on how much blue you decide to play. So yeah, lo lots of interesting stuff going on in this particular pool. Um, and the set, I really like the, you know, the Tempest set as a whole. So it, as I've said, it's definitely going to be interested, interesting. 
when we get to to building like two of each of the um to each of the pack sorry two from each of the sets of the block so i was trying to say and i'm always curious as well one you know with the large set small set builds and and the thing i've started doing with the two small sets in this set particularly um there's loads of interesting synergies between sets that are going on i think in terms of the chances of building a a three color deck might be increased when we go to the large set you know the tempest plus uh exodus or tempest plus um stronghold because i from if my memory is correct tempest has all the the mana fixing in it there isn't much land based mana fixing in the the two small sets from what i remember um, but we'll obviously see that um in the next video actually because i'll be doing um tempest and then uh, tempest stronghold so anyway i'm gonna wrap it up now um hope you have a great weekend thanks for watching bye for now